Let's switch gears now and talk about the weather. We are watching the latest surrounding Elsa. Here's a look at new video showing the impact of the storm on the Florida coast. Oh, this is a look wow. from overnight in Indian Rocks Beach near Tampa. A lot of heavy rain and strong wind out yeah, there. Certainly so. My old stomping grounds really getting it this morning. We know over the next 24 hours, though, the storm is going to be moving up through Georgia and coming our way specifically towards the Carolina coast. So let's get over to Chris right now, who's been tracking the storm for us. Any rain that we're expecting because of Elsa. Yeah, good amount of rain for the Charlotte area. One to two inches will be falling, but some areas in the Carolinas could be dealing with this. This is a tornado warning observed on the ground around Brunswick, Georgia. This is the second of two tornado warnings that was here on the map and all these are observed, meaning they weren't just radar indicated they were happening. So I want to address that first. The biggest chance for severe storms and any sort of rotating storm should be just southeast of us, but that is including parts of Anson County, Richmond County and Chesterfield counties. The further east you go, we have the best chance. So here's our rotation tracks. This is 830 in the morning. There's a chance that by the end of the morning, we could have some tornado warnings popping up, especially around here close to Myrtle Beach and on the eastern side of the Carolinas and then eventually it'll start to unravel and then we're going to lose that tornado potential. As for us, this looks to be mainly just a rain event. It's going to be a wet start to the day. We've already had the first signs of rain move through. That is now clear of the Charlotte area besides some very, very light mist rain and some drizzle. The heaviest rain now moving past Lincolnton into Hickory and Catawba County. These showers should be out of our hair in the next couple of hours and then behind that we're waiting for the next surge of rain. So preparing for tomorrow. It's right along the I-77 corridor. There's really going to be a big cutoff as far as how much rain we see because the eastern side of any tropical system usually has the most rain when it's moving north. So it's the eastern side of the Carolinas that has a medium threat for any sort of flash flooding. Here's the exact path. This has trended a lot further west compared to what we've seen over the last 24 to 36 hours. Very close to Charlotte, meaning that the heaviest rain certainly is going to be at least southeast of us. It'll turn over to tropical depression Elsa by 2 p.m. tomorrow, then could turn back barely into a tropical storm as it moves past Long Island. But here are our flash flood watches. Only three counties included as of right now for overnight tonight through tomorrow afternoon, even though this looks to be mainly a rain event for the morning for us. That is going to be Stanley, Anson, and Richmond County until 6 p.m. So here's a close look at our rain totals. The further west and northwest go, the gradient really drops off, where some people even seen less than a tenth of an inch. In general, right along on the I-77 corridor, I think on average can be up to one to two inches. Some areas seeing a little bit more, some areas seeing a little bit less, and then up to one and a half to three inches the further east that you slide, and that's areas that are going to be under that flash flood watch. So a closer look at our rainfall. Here's three o'clock in the morning, not seeing all that much at that point. Light to moderate rain, but these totals really start to surge by the middle of tomorrow morning. That's where we could have that one to two inch range, but up to an inch certainly looks to be solid, and that could provide some isolated and localized flooding. So one more look at exactly what that rain looks like. We already had round one roll through. We're seeing that right now. Scattered spotty showers possible right around midnight. Here's the main event. So three o'clock to six, seven o'clock. Most of the rain is going to be falling at this point, right when the sun is rising up, even though you're not going to see it, but you can see the rotation of this storm. Once you get to the end of the morning, in the afternoon, we're not done with the rain per se, but we're done with the main core of the system. So it's only behind this that we're going to have isolated spotty showers and storms that we'll keep an eye on for the afternoon. But Elsa is gone at that point. As for the winds, only about 20 to 30 mile per hour gusts, so not really a big wind issue here. They should be a little bit stronger the further east that you go around the core of that storm, but certainly going to be a breezy start to the day. Also, one thing that this thing is leaving behind a tremendous amount of moisture. Still seeing these yellows and reds remaining in its wake. That means we're in that humid to muggy range, not just as Elsa is passing, but for the next seven days. And we're going to join the heat after that. Lower to the mid 90s, pretty much the norm. Nine out of the next 10 days, which one of these days don't go together tomorrow. Also, because we're dealing with a passing tropical system, because the cloud cover and the rain, likely high is only either side of 80 degrees. Yeah, yesterday or tomorrow, I should say, sticking out like a sore thumb there on that forecast. Chris, thank you.